I'm Judy Stiles. Thank you for joining us this week on Newsmakers. Well, February is Heart Month. It happens every year with focus on heart health, but today we're looking at that topic that's actually a year-round topic. I'd like to introduce my guests joining me today, Jana Smith and Bobby Ballard. Thank you both for being here today. Thank you for having us. What are your feelings about having this emphasis, especially this time of year, on heart health, you know, just uh, for the community? Go ahead. Okay. So um, I think it's, I think heart health, as you mentioned, is a year round thing that folks should focus on. I think it's important to have a once a month focus on it um, to bring national attention to it. This past Friday, um, February 7th was mm -hmm. National Wear Red Day, right. um, which was to bring awareness both to heart health and specifically the Go Red for a Women uh, initiative. And when we talk about heart health, we talk about whole cardiovascular. There's a lot of things involved. We do, and uh, heart health is the number one killer of uh, United States citizens uh, year-round. And so people need to really uh, try to work on their heart health and their healthy eating and different things. And like you say, it's a it's a year-round event, so not just, you know, certain times of the year, so we like to concentrate on that. Of course, we're talking about educational efforts, awareness yeah. being a big yeah. emphasis, and both of you have agreed to be on the show today because you have stories to share. So I think I'd like to start off with the audience, you know, that, yeah. you know, how do your stories tie into heart health? Yeah. Sure. So um, when I was 16 years old, um, I actually lost my mom to heart disease. She was only 34 years old, and she died suddenly of a heart attack. And her mom, my grandmother, um, passed away of a heart attack when she was only 31 years old. And <clears throat> about two weeks before my mom passed, I have an aunt who was 33 at the time and she had her first heart attack and had a quadruple by bypass. She did, um, she did live for several years, mm -hmm. um, continued to have other um, heart surgeries as she went along, um, but it tends to um, affect the women in my family early in their 30s and like I said, in, have lost some of them. So when I was 23 years old, I uh, found out that I have um, very high cholesterol. And so mm -hmm. I've been under the care of a cardiologist since I was 23. And um, so that's, that's why it's important to me, obviously losing right. my mom at a young age and uh, other women. That so that really affected. brings up the hereditary aspects. If you that's see right. a pattern in your family, that's you right. need to be aware. That's mm -hmm. right, that's right. And so for me, the way that I found out that I had high cholesterol was um, through the free annual health assessment that my employer does. I've been mm -hmm. with Arbest Bank mm -hmm. um, for almost 20 years and I it was the first year I'd participated in um, that health assessment and got my results back. And at 23 years old, my cholesterol was um, almost 300 oh, wow. and um, so went to a doctor who referred me on to a cardiologist and mm -hmm. again have been under their care since then I've had lots and lots of tests done I've had all all the nuclear stress tests mm -hmm. and things of that nature uh, my heart is healthy um, I just have very high cholesterol and the best that doctors are able to figure out about the genetics in my family is that um, the women in my family, we have very small arteries mm -hmm. and um, we have genetically very high cholesterol. Mm -hmm. I will also say though, my mom, my grandma, my aunt were all smokers mm -hmm. and um, I am not a smoker. And so that has a huge impact on heart health as well. So lifestyle as well as hereditary right. being a, mm -hmm. a right. factor in tying that together. That's right. And Bobby, you have mm -hmm. a story to share as well. Well, I do. Mine was a little different. Uh, back when I was about 50 years old, which has been a few years ago now, mm -hmm. but uh, I decided that it was time to get a little healthier, so uh, I needed to lose weight and went to the mall and started walking and uh, wanted to get in better shape. So I did, and I, the first time I went to the mall, I couldn't walk. Oh, 500 feet without having to stop and take a break and rest. And uh, then eventually I stayed with it and uh, got to where I could uh, do three, four, five miles at the mall inside. And uh, I'd lost about 50 pounds, so feeling much better about myself. So I thought I'd start running. So I joined the Joplin Family Y and took one of the Anyone Can Run classes. And uh, so we were, uh, oh gosh, quite a ways along and uh, up to about three miles of running and had finished uh, my race, or my run that day, went back to the car and got my uh, bottle of water, sit down, and that's the last thing I remember for eight days. I had a heart attack, mm -hmm. and then, of course they eventually put me in a drug-induced coma, but I happened to have a nurse running with me who gave me CPR. Wow. So she, you know, her and God really saved my life that day. Mm -hmm. And uh, they got me on the ambulance, and uh, they uh, shocked my heart, trying to get it back into beating a regular uh, seven times. Got me to the hospital and told my wife, said uh, uh, when they finally got her there that I'll never live through the night and get all your family together and uh, make all the arrangements. We'll try to have me, try to get me to hang on till in the morning. 
but my cardiologist, which is a wonderful guy, just like yours, I'm sure, so um, said I have a different idea, so he put in a stent, which another thing developed by the American Heart Association along with mm -hmm. CPR. And uh, they got the blood flowing, and then they said in, uh, you know, three or four days, we're going to do uh, triple bypass if I respond. So they woke me up, took me out of the drug-induced coma, and had me wiggle my fingers and toes. They asked me who the president was, and I think I said Kennedy or Nixon or something, <laughs> but, but they said that was close enough, so they decided. So they went ahead and did, uh, did triple bypass, and... Um, the, the next, the very next day, they had me up and out of bed. Of course, I was like a sack of potatoes. I had a, a, an intern uh, walking me around. And then within a couple of days, uh, I was bored with the hospital. So, so you were so, feeling good enough to say, let me yes. out Yes. <laughs> so I, I asked the two, uh, the two nurses that were walking with me, Nurse Tech, and I said, what do I have to do to get out of here? And they said, well, there's a set of stairs. When you can go up and down that by yourself, we'll get you out. So two days later, I went up and down the stairs, got home. But that's mm -hmm. when the fun really began because I had to start all over. So recovery safe. Went to the mall, started walking again and everything. Well, the race that I was training for... Um, I actually walked in five weeks after my triple bypass surgery. So you were determined, I'm going to make that race. I was <laughs> going to make it happen, and I've got a shirt we'll show you a little mm -hmm. bit later that all the people in the class had made up for me. And uh, on the back it said, running for Bobby. I have, you know, many great memories of that because mm -hmm. all these poor people were there when I had the heart attack. You know, here's 25, uh, I won't say strangers, but we all became very tight after that. Mm -hmm. But uh, after that, things just went incredibly crazy. I, I've, I felt so good. Uh, I completed eight full marathons, which is 26 miles. People don't realize how far that is. The last one I did was last October, and it's from Commerce, Oklahoma to Joplin. That's 26 wow. miles. So, wow. so um, um, I've done over 200 races, and uh, just I'm still running coach at the at the Y, and uh, I'm just very blessed to be here. So that's why I got on the uh, American Heart Association, and just want to help promote other people, you know, to to live healthy. I, you know, I don't want them to go through what I did. I like to help people, you mm -hmm. know, get healthy at the Y because I'm still there uh, as a coach. But Great. Uh, I really enjoy what I do now. And you mentioned the medals, and I think we have some of those in front we of us do. on the set. And yep. So that kind of shows your accomplishments you've made since then. As, you know, yep. going back there, in your career. There's one there, and uh, it's actually from uh, Olathe, Kansas, and it's, it's called the uh, Garmin Marathon, and uh, it's all about Wizard of Oz. What was very appropriate, that uh, that was my very first marathon, and it, uh, it has a picture of the Tin Man with his heart on it. Oh, nice. And uh, the, uh, the announcer at the race actually came out out and uh, told my story about three minutes before I crossed the finish line. Of course, I had people running out. I didn't even know, hugging me and kissing <laughs> me and congratulating me, which was fine. Mm -hmm. And uh, so it, it's always held a very special uh, place in my heart. And come uh, next year will be my 10th anniversary of that race. Mm -hmm. And I'm planning on, um, everything goes right, I'm planning on running the full marathon again in it. Great. So, yeah. So. so really showing that no matter what your age, Health, heart health is a concern. That's right. And fine together. And we talked mentioned high, uh, cholesterol problems. It's yeah. not something you can feel. I mean, you can't say, no. I think I have too much cholesterol. You have to have those tests to find that. That's right. So, you know, I was 23 years old and probably weighed 130 pounds. I was, um, for all intents and purposes, in great health. Mm -hmm. um, I was active and I, I, I had no clue. I, I knew that eventually I would need to have some testing done because of my family history. Oh. It, was has always been in the back of my mind but again it was the first time i'd ever had my cholesterol checked was at 23 years old and i really encourage you know my friends and family and other women because heart disease is a silent killer mm -hmm. heart, I mean, it's it's, you, a, it's not obvious you're having problems that's I, right it's a silent killer the good news is 80 percent of mm -hmm. it is preventable through lifestyle changes and behaviors but no i had no idea and so then when i got my results back and the cholesterol is high I went to my regular doctor and said okay um you know diet and exercise mm -hmm. and he said no no, because of your family history, you need to be we on. We need to take other steps. You have to be on this medication, and I have been on it. Um, I went off of it for a few years when mm -hmm. my husband and I were trying to get pregnant, and then I had my son mm -hmm. um, because it's very dangerous uh, medication. And after I had my son, 
my cholesterol was about 350 um, because oh I had been off of Wait. it. Mm -hmm. And when I'm on my medication, it's usually around 140. Um, anything over 200 is considered high. Mm -hmm. um, so they really want to keep it under that number. With my family history, they want mine even lower than, they don't even want mine getting close to the high So part. they want to keep it within that specific range they of the low end. That's right. That's right. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, so no, you, it, you, you cannot feel it. Mm -hmm. I felt great and fine. Um, had no idea. Bobby, you obviously you were feeling fine because you were running, so well, there was no uh, symptom, anything was wrong. <laughs> that's what my cardiologist said too, uh, because before I started running, I actually went to my uh, family physician and I said, I'm going to start running. And mm -hmm. you know, he ran a few tests and said everything was great. Well, after I had a heart attack, he said, well, we probably should have done a stress test. But mm -hmm. I had no warning signs. You know, a lot of right. people have the numbness in their arm right. or they break out in the sweats, but uh, I had none of that. I just, uh, I felt fine. And I, even to that day, I tried to remember remember back to when I had the heart attack and I remember going out to the car to get my water and walking back and I would have thought it would have been under you know stress right. you know when I was right. running is when it would have happened but it's not so it it is such a silent killer it doesn't yes. announce that you know it's coming right. a lot of times so yeah. so now we do a stress test about every three or four years right. now mm -hmm. and uh, okay. of course I run all the time so I can you know go quite a while on the treadmill so I just use it as a little workout now <laughs> then, but yeah. but anyway but I'm mentioning you know just even as we're recording this program recently a National Hockey League player collapsed right. on the bench and right. cardiac incident they called her episode so right. you think people who are athletes in full health right. you know have problems mm -hmm. but like once again, they had someone there to help mm -hmm. them. So that's another aspect right. that having that person who knows CPR, the medical care, to follow up with that. Right. You know, I remember the night that my mom passed. Um, she, my dad was at work, and she and I were home. And I called 911, and um, the paramedics came, and her vitals were fine. They checked mm -hmm. her. They said her vitals are fine, but the symptoms she's describing are that of a heart attack. So we're going to go ahead and take her and um, have her checked out. Right. And um, she did. Um, she flatlined several times. Um, she flatlined on the way to the hospital when she got there, but her vitals were fine. Her blood pressure and everything was fine. Um, but they just they could sense by being knowing they what knew to look for. by the symptoms she was telling. So, so, so you're right. Um, you know, a lot of times, just having the right person there um, can literally save your life. Um, unfortunately, it didn't happen with my mom. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, again, even her vitals were fine. Right. And the difference between men and women. I mean, I've heard that there yes. women need to be aware of different things than what men yeah. might be. So that's really, really important to note um, because heart attack symptoms for women are typically different than men. They oftentimes are flu-like symptoms. So going back to my, my grandma and mm -hmm. her heart attack was in 1974 when she passed. And she had actually been admitted into the hospital on a Thursday for flu-like symptoms. And she had been in the hospital over the weekend and she was slated to go home that Sunday. And I remember my mom telling me they were you know, cleaning the house, mom's coming home today. And um, that Sunday she had a heart attack while still in the hospital and died. Mm -hmm. But she had been admitted in the hospital for flu-like symptoms. So they weren't and checking for cardiac problems. That's right, in the early mm -hmm. 70s. And probably even now, I don't think, I think that those a lot of times can go missed. And you know, women, we are, um, most of us are wives and mothers and a lot of us have careers. and. Um, we care for others and we're worried about others and their health and we sometimes put ourselves last. We're too busy to worry about that pain that we don't mm -hmm. know That's about. That's right. <laughs> and, and again, so it's very important for women to understand that your heart attack symptoms may not mimic that of what a man may have. Mm -hmm. And tying of all that yeah. together. Well, the kind of the theme of we're talking a lot about is exercise and being mm -hmm. involved. Mm -hmm. I know one of our students, Missouri Southern has a wellness program for faculty all and right. staff and encouraging students to be involved. Mm -hmm. And one of our students went to our recreation center here on campus. Mm -hmm. So I'd like to share that story with the audience. Just kind of show how, okay. again, you mentioned about your employer with health, health and the yeah. why, just how across the board there are a lot of opportunities to encourage healthy lifestyles. Great. So, yeah. so let's take a look at that Good. story. Wonderful. Recently, I met with Stephen Benfield, the Recreational Service Director, to talk about the Bind Deck Recreational Center here at Southern. Well, first and foremost, they essentially are paying for it in their tuition. So it's something that they're already a member of. So my question is, why wouldn't they want to come? Um, but also, there are so many health benefits, so many uh, programs and services that we offer for those students that they definitely should take advantage of. Uh, from open recreation, just coming and using our facilities, to some of our more specialized services like personal training, uh, group fitness classes, intramurals, there's a ton of activities they can do to keep them, keep them active and healthy. 
Well, we do have actually two facilities. We have the rec center and with that membership includes the swimming pool as well. So there's some opportunities there that's a little versatile, um, but even around campus, I mean, we have trails, we have a map that we can provide where they can hit some of the trails out on campus. So if they're doing a cardiovascular program or just getting out to walk, there are some other options. And we do have um, partnerships in the community. So we have a relationship with uh, Millennium Family Fitness to where some of the people who swim in their pool over the summer come here and use our pool. Um, so there are some options there that are a bit versatile and not just tied to our recreation center here on campus. The center provides 71,000 square feet of space, including hardwood courts, aerobic rooms, locker rooms, weight and cardiovascular areas, and over 100 pieces of equipment and indoor track. With a clean facility, expert staff, and convenient location, students of all walks of life should find it easy to keep themselves healthy. But if you're new to the fitness lifestyle or just don't know how to use any of the machines, don't worry. There are student workers who can help you at any time. So we actually have student staff that can help assist, you know, if it's, uh, you know, setting up a machine or they're just a little intimidated. Um, but then we actually have certified staff who can help them as personal trainers get on a program, set goals, help reach those goals. So they have a lot of options available. And even during the holidays, the recreational center makes it easy to stay in shape. Remain opening during southern spring, fall, and summer breaks, with holiday hours being Monday through Friday, 6 a.m. to 8 p.m., Saturday, 8 a.m. to 8 p.m., and Sunday, 8 p 12 p.m. to 8 p.m. Yeah, so actually we try to, even in inclement weather, we have um, our, our hours change, but we are still open 10 a.m. to 7 p.m., um, and then over the breaks, we try to stay open as much as possible. Um, and, and really that's dependent on if the students are available. We, we um, run the center with student employees. So we have to have students available. Um, but typically, um, historically, we've had our facility open uh, over breaks, um, maybe condensed hours, but typically we're still open. 6 a.m. to 10 p.m. weekdays. And Saturday, and these are on our website, Saturday is... Um, 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. Sunday is noon to 10 p.m. For Newsmakers, I'm Dylan Nowlett. Now back to the show. As you can see the opportunities here on Missouri yeah. Southern campus for activities and keeping healthy yeah. and so forth. And I know the Y has its program for people of all ages as well. We do. I recognize many of those machines there. So <laughs> people want, there's just no reason, you know, people can't. I know it's hard to motivate yourself mm -hmm. to get into an exercise regiment. But, uh, and at the Y, we try to find things people like to do because if you don't find something you like to do, you won't continue to right. do it. So it's, uh, we have so many classes and different things for people to do. But if you just want to get out and walk you know mm -hmm. and that's why I keep referring back to the mall it's free it's mm -hmm. always 70 degrees and mm -hmm. it's a mile all the way it's around marked as you go through, it's so marked you as you go going. through <laughs> yeah so there's there's many things that can be done you don't have you know if you're not a weightlifter or a runner or that but just get out and go for a walk yeah. makes a difference well I know the Heart Association has a lot of resources and I know that you working with the Heart Association helping with the educational efforts they have a website that has a ton of information so people just right. looking what can I do what are some of the options there's places to go yeah. You know, one thing that the American Heart Association really promotes is getting your 10,000 steps a day. Mm -hmm. And that's something that my cardiologist really um, beats into me. Every year when I see him, uh -huh. if I'm not uh -huh. wearing my Fitbit, uh -huh. he says, where's your Fitbit? Uh -huh. And so, like Bobby said, uh -huh. cardiovascular, you know, um, exercise is great, but literally just walking and getting 10,000 steps a day is enough to keep you heart healthy. And the difference in your lifestyle, instead of taking the elevator up to the next floor, right. you take the stairs. That's right. Go out and walk your dog. Get a dog that's great for your heart yeah. health as well. Mm -hmm. Ride a bike. We, uh, yeah. we have lots of cycling groups around here. Mm -hmm. And they have rides downtown, and they're just slow rides. They're not, you know, athletes trying to right. enter the Tour de France, you right. know. So just to get out, and anything will, will help a lot. And uh, just to kind of get your, you know, you want to get your heart rate up is what right. you're trying to do. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. well, Jana, you mentioned diet earlier. Yeah. You know, yeah. for some people, maybe right. it's watching yeah. what they're eating and what their diet is. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, eating foods that are lower in cholesterol, mm -hmm. um, avoiding foods that are high in cholesterol, avoiding red meats um, as much as possible. Um, you know, eggs are considered, can be considered high in cholesterol. Um, oatmeal, you know, can help lower your cholesterol. So being, you know, conscientious of um, maybe, maybe having, my, in my family, for example, um, we have turkey bacon mm. every weekend uh, instead mm -hmm. of regular bacon. Right. And mm -hmm. so on the very rare occasion of a holiday or something that we get real bacon, my husband thinks that it's just the biggest <laughs> treat. Um, but a lot of times just those small,
small, again, you know, being intentional with those small decisions can mm -hmm. make a big difference. Um, I always choose extra lean hamburger meat. Mm -hmm. um, turkey meat is another alternative. Mm -hmm. So there, there are another lot of good Things options. You can look at. And I know yeah. there's a website, as I mentioned, the Heart Association has that talks yeah. about, I think it says, move more, eat smart, be well. You yeah. know, so even being aware of your health. Uh, yeah. A lot of people, maybe you had the option of a health wellness fair you mentioned. You know, yeah. so a lot of people maybe aren't right. monitoring their health, how they're doing. Right. Mm -hmm. It's important to be aware of the need to go to a doctor, the need to have those checkups. It is, yeah. and um, there, if you people will just go to uh, the the Facebook page or the website for the American Heart Association, mm -hmm. it will give you so many heart healthy things that you can do. And like I say, they've you know developed so many things, and that's what a lot of the money goes to is to research uh, mm -hmm. how to make people you know live longer by and just by research by doing different things you know for. Uh, for food and uh, just to keep the, the heart beating regular for, for many years, you know. Yeah, right. It's the only one we've got, so we want to keep yeah. it, yep. <laughs> now you mentioned the funds and the research involved, mm -hmm. So, and earlier you mentioned stints, so there's research involved with the medical field as well with the Heart Association. That's right, and you know, and for folks that are um, maybe interested in getting involved or um, even getting more um, information mm -hmm. on being heart healthy, um, every year um, for the last several years when we um, do this here at Missouri Southern, mm -hmm. um, the, the Heart Walk for the right. Forest State Heart Walk, I'm actually chairing the event this year. I'm super mm -hmm. excited about that. And um, we had about 400 people it was. Um, it was that attended good, this past October. Good turnout. And so we have booths that are set up and we have, you know, local businesses that do sponsorships, but um, there's a lot of information that's available. Um, and then we always um, spotlight a survivor. Mm -hmm. um, Bobby was um, one of the survivors mm -hmm. several years mm -hmm. ago for mm -hmm. the Heart Walk. And um, it's a great way to get involved to become educated. And a lot of folks like to go out and walk, you know, in memory of someone that they mm -hmm. love or in support of someone that they love, someone that is a survivor, maybe someone that they've lost. So mm -hmm. it's a great opportunity to get involved. Do you find a lot of peer support as well? I mean, oh. as survivors, as people who oh, have dealt with goodness, this Oh my goodness, yes. It's funny when I, I, I go around and speak a lot of churches and schools, nursing students, mm -hmm. and uh, I talk to people and they'll, they'll say, you know, so-and-so I knew went through the same thing or, or went through the same problem, had this, you know, a stent put in and his life got so much better. And of course, you know, people start, you know, taking care of their, what they eat and right. uh, it's a lot, makes a lot of difference. Uh, yeah. Something else we, we kind of like to, we really like to promote is, uh, uh, hands only CPR yes. and at the American uh, at the heart walk uh, we had a booth set up mm -hmm. and we were showing and in fact we had a, a another event at Memorial Hall parking lot mm -hmm. and uh, that was our uh, we had about oh six sessions of just hands only CPR mm -hmm. we had the little uh, inflatable dummies mm -hmm. that uh, we worked on and uh, it, it's, it's really good because everybody really everybody should know CPR you so don't always have that nurse with you you do your... not always have that nurse and I'm the first time I took it after my heart attack I said well I'm not only uh, giving a CPR certified now I've had it given to me you know because mm -hmm. there's not many people can say that because uh, I just can't tell we can't stress enough I don't like to use a lot of statistics but uh, every 40 seconds an American has a heart attack yeah. so while we've been doing this uh, program if you can imagine how many people have had a heart attack mm -hmm. and these are just in the United States mm -hmm. so it's uh, it's a huge problem but uh, we we hope just education will help people get to you know living better lifestyle 14,000 Missourians a year die of heart disease, heart disease. just to bring it local and to mm -hmm. make that connection. Yeah. And when we say heart disease, it doesn't necessarily have to be the heart attack. That's There's right. other ways that you can be affected. That's right. Um, strokes, you mm -hmm. know, that, that's another thing um, that folks should be, you know, conscientious of. Um, your blood pressure, you know, knowing your numbers right. is really important. Knowing your cholesterol, knowing your blood pressure, your triglycerides. Um, high blood pressure is another silent killer and um, can cause a stroke or a heart attack, you know, it, mm -hmm. so those those are really important. And the medical field's made a lot of changes. You mentioned the stints, but you know, people who in the past may have had the irregular heartbeats or something diagnosed, right. there's a way to deal with these things now. That's right. There, there is now, uh, in, in probably back in the 70s, I probably wouldn't be here talking to you because things have changed so much with mm -hmm. uh, stints and, and just all the medical, uh, you know, technology breakthroughs. Mm -hmm. So things have changed so much and I can't imagine, you know, in 20 years what, uh, you know, will be. And you know, every uh, uh, building, restaurant, commercial place, anywhere has an AED now. Right. And those are, uh, those are just so self-explanatory. Uh, you, can't, you can't hardly mess one of those up when you're putting it on. And I hate to say it, but we have had a couple of uh, episodes at the Y where mm -hmm. we've had to use mm -hmm. the AED on people. But uh, 
but not very often. So we don't like to do that unless we have to, of <laughs> right, course. But, emergency comes up. <laughs> yes, right, right. but we're, you know, we, that's why I think everybody should really know CPR. Yeah. So. So the educational, and you mentioned you have a child. It's important for to start yeah. young, as far as like being being aware as a youngster of the health, heart health. Absolutely. So my son, you know, my husband and my son and I, we we've walked in the heart walk. Um, as a matter of fact, the first year we got involved with the heart walk was the year after my son was born. That's mm -hmm. when um, it's always been important to me. But that's when I realized that it's important for him to be educated. Um, also wanted to do it to. Um, you know, to memorialize my mom, mm -hmm. and but yes, so he walks with us every year, and uh, we we were taking the dogs for a walk um, a week or two ago when it was nice weather out, and I said, Charlie, I said, did you know this is Heart Month? And we talked about Heart Month. Um, my father-in-law um, also passed of a heart attack when mm -hmm. he was 54, so we've lost my mom and my father-in-law. So we talk a lot about. Um, Grandpa David and Grandma Rhonda, and they live in heaven, and because their hearts were unhealthy. So, um, so yes, it's very important, um, especially when you have a family history, family to history. start young. And you find a lot of people once you start talking, they say, "Oh, I had an aunt, or I had a grandmother, right. or something." That is really, I mean, was it one in three a statistic I saw that are people are affected by heart That's problems? That's right. That's right. There's just not you. You can't talk to somebody who somebody in their family has not been affected, if not mm -hmm. their self. Yeah. And it's generally their immediate family, you know. And mm -hmm. back in the you know 40s, 50s, 60s, people smoked. Just they didn't think right. anything about it, mm -hmm. you know. But uh, we we hope we've you know shown how bad that is for people too. But mm -hmm. um, if if you are a smoker, we ask that you please try to get help to stop because it, it mm -hmm. that's probably one of the very worst things you can do. I mean, mm. of course you want to maintain a healthy weight and right. just, just eat better, but uh, smoking is just, is just so bad. There's for, a, that tie yeah. between the smoking and yeah. the heart health. Yes. Because yes. 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 if you go to the doctor, I mean, that's the first thing mine asked me. He said, do you smoke? Have right. you ever smoked? Of course, well, no, right. but uh, they, they, it just causes heart attacks. So. It, it gets a lot of times linked to lung cancer, which mm -hmm. it is, mm -hmm. but I think sometimes people forget the effect that it has on your heart. So there's everything tying together once again. That's right. Mm -hmm. So a lot of resource if somebody tuned in toward the end of the program, the Heart Association has a website and a Facebook page. Then. That's right. Mm -hmm. uh, so they can call those up and. Yes. <laughs> yep. Yes. And, and they will. Uh, yep. There's so much information on there, and they can refer you to. Uh, and most of these CPR classes are free. Okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, they can get you started on a healthier lifestyle. Mm -hmm. And we have local offices, you know, through Missouri mm -hmm. and uh, well, every state. So in the four state area. Right. So yeah, the there's, the there's all <laughs> right. all these events have all kinds of literature. They will also give out when uh, when you go to those. So we can uh, really get everybody, you know, on the same page. We hope. Great. Yeah. Well, I'd like to thank both of you for visiting with me thank today you. and thank sharing you. with our audience. Yes, thank you for having you. us. You're welcome. And I'd like to thank you, the viewers, for joining us this week on Newsmakers. I'm Judy Stiles. Hope you can join me again next week at the same time on the station. We'll see you then.